Okay, so we're back here continuing to talk about open channel flow. In the last video, we looked at an example where we solved for the value of Manning's n <clears throat> for a trapezoidal geometry. And solving for n and s0 with Manning's equation is generally a direct solution procedure separating n or s or, or q. Solving for the depth is more complicated because it affects the area and the perimeter and they have these fraction exponents that make it kind of hard. So in this example, I want to look at uh, a circular cross section. And I wanted to talk about why this was important, not just because we can create this example, but this is practical. <clears throat> so open channel flows often occur in circular materials um, in addition to simpler shapes. So what are some examples of hydraulic systems? And I mean, really key one here is going to be in sewer pipes, both sanitary sewers and in storm sewers, storm drains. So when it rains, we need to provide the water someplace to go, and it may go into a storm drain. <clears throat> and that storm drain may not be full. And likewise, when we have uh, wastewater from buildings and other facilities that needs to be in contact with the atmosphere to make sure that it's aerated to try to minimize issues with the formation of toxic and explosive gases and <clears throat> so we have to make sure that that's open to the atmosphere and yeah we can solve this problem again using these tables um, in this case for circular pipes, given we can find the depth of the flow y, if we know the diameter, and we know this angle um, that corresponds to the angle from basically it being empty, and then 90 degrees is half full and 180 is completely. So <clears throat> let's look at an example where we're trying to figure out what the depth is for a circular cross-section pipe. So here we've got a two meter diameter, and so <clears throat> diameter here is d0 that's what it would be the depth would be if it was flowing full but we don't know what this one is it's uh 200 meters long so l is 200 meters it's corrugated metal uh and it's flowing partially full and we're told the flow rate is 5.83 cubic meters per second and that there's a drop across the pipe of two meters and so we're supposed to estimate the depth of the flow here. And so to use Manning's equation, we're going to need a, a value for N. And so corrugated metal pipe, we can go look this up in the table of supplemental values here. Corrugated metal, N is 0.024. Okay. And then we're also going to need the slope. So we're given the drop and the length, so slope is 2 over 200, which is 0.01. That's the slope from one end of the pipe to the other. So we got this circular pipe, and it is on a 0 0.01 to 1 uh, slope. OK, so we're given that, and then we know uh, Manning's equation. So we're working here in metric units, So and I'm going to use the version with the area in the perimeter again. So the version of Manning's equation that I want to work with here is going to be for Q. We're given flow rate, not velocity. We're in metric, so it's 1 over N. And then area to the 5 thirds, perimeter to the negative 2 thirds, and S0 to the 1 half. So here I'm looking for the depth, which affects the area and the wetted perimeter. So I don't know either of these, but I have all these other values here, n, s, naught, and q. So I can solve this a to the 5 thirds over p to the 2 thirds is equal to q n over s naught to the 1 half. I can plug these in. And so now I need equations for area and perimeter as a function of the depth. So what I want is the is the depth of flow, um, <clears throat> which is y. And so to do this, I've got to work with my um, 
circular cross section and so the area here we're told is for the circular case you can look this up area and perimeter 1 8 2 theta minus sine 2 theta times d0 squared and the perimeter is theta times d0 my formulas here and so this is note that theta is in radians okay not in degrees so yeah so you can imagine here remember that theta let's say that it's below half full for a case so if I draw this out, if the water level is here, I'm gonna try to make this clear. So here's the water level. The depth of flow is Y here. That's what I wanna know. This is a right triangle here. This is D zero over two. That's the hypotenuse of this triangle. The, this side, if I have the angle theta there, is gonna be d over 2 the hypotenuse times the cosine of theta that's this length there and then the whole length here this is also d0 over 2 okay so this is like the radius which is half the diameter this is half the diameter which is the radius <laughs> this is what i'm trying to find and then this part if by right triangles is d0 cosine theta so we have that y plus d0 over 2 times the cosine of theta has to be equal to d0 over 2, which means y equals d0 over 2 times 1 minus the cosine of theta. And this will work because cosine becomes, uh, this will become like an additive term. Cosine is going to be, um, if I look at 90, a 90 degree angle, cosine is 0, and then this becomes negative, and this will actually still work all the way up to the 180 degrees no matter what theta is okay so i can get the depth once i know the angle i have equations here for area in terms of angle and d0 which i know and then i have manning's equation here with q n s naught which i know area and the perimeter so if i substitute my values in here this is a constant area and perimeter i can write in my values here with theta and d0 and then um, I'm left with one equation for theta. Once I've got theta, then I can solve for y. That's the, the strategy here for how you could solve this problem. So area is 1 8 2 theta minus sine of 2 theta times d0 here, which is 2 squared. All that to the 5 thirds over theta times 2 um, for the perimeter to the power 2 thirds. And that has to be equal to 5.83. And again, I've got everything in the right unit, so I don't have to worry about unit conversions here. 0 0.024, 0 0.01 to the 0.5 to the 1 half power. So if I do 2 squared divided by 8 to the 5 thirds and 2 to the 2 thirds down there, I'm going to be left with 2 theta minus sine of 2 theta all to the 5 thirds over theta to the 2 thirds. And then, so again, taking these, this 2, this 2 squared, and that 1 8, doing all that math, that is going to leave me with, let's see, two to the negative seven thirds yeah because this is two to the second, two to the negative three, so two to the negative one to the five thirds and another two to the negative two thirds is two to the negative seven thirds and then the right hand side ends up being 1.399 so if i rearrange this some more 
going to work back up over here. Um, I end up with, let's see, 2 theta minus sine of 2 theta is equal to 7.05 to the 3 fifths times theta to the 2 fifths. Okay, so this is, move that over there. Basically, I end up with this term. And uh, so then I can rewrite this whole mess as 2 theta um, minus sine of 2 theta minus 3.228 times theta to the 0.4 has to be equal to zero. Okay, so I've got this equation. There's no way that I can solve this analytically. I can't get, I could do an arc sine to make this thing go away, but then I'd have an arc sine with theta inside of it. And so there's no way I can rearrange this and get this to, to work out. So I can solve this iteratively. So I, I can guess a value. Okay, so remember that theta is in radians here. So uh, 90 degrees would be like a good starting point maybe. And so 90 degrees is pi over two, which is like 1.57. So that might be a good starting point. Um, I'm gonna just start with theta equals one. And if I do that and plug it in here, so I might say that this is the left-hand side. I need this to be zero, so let's try theta equals one. If I do that, I get negative 2.14. If I go up to theta equals two to kind of bracket that middle ground, then the left-hand side, if I plug all that in, becomes equal to 0 0.49. Seven. So that means that somewhere between one and two, it goes from negative to positive. The zero point for this left side has to be somewhere between there. So the next place I might go is 1.5. And for that, I get a negative 0.938. So halfway between them, um, and I've gone... Part of the way there, it looks like I need to get closer to two because I still haven't crossed over. So uh, the next place I might go to guess might be around like 1.8. And if I do that, I get negative 0.041. So I'm getting close, but I still haven't gotten there. 1.82 gives me 0.016. One point eight one gives me negative point oh one two two nine and one point one eight one five gives me point oh oh two so uh, i mean that's getting to be close enough there so theta is approximately equal to one point eight one five this is showing you how you can solve it without a calculator you could also put this in excel and i've done this before in excel where we solve it with solver to try to figure out the value of theta. You can automate this whole thing. Once you have it set up, you could use a spreadsheet tool like that to then um, solve any kind of problem with a different diameter or a different length or whatever, um, and then give it the Y value. So anyway, we figured out that theta was 1.815, and so then Y is equal to, up here we said, d0 over 2, 1 minus cos theta. So 2 over 2, 1 minus cos 1.815 gives me 1.24 meters. 1.24 meters. That would be the depth of flow here. So I've shown you how you can do this with just a calculator. It's a mess. You have to go through and um, from here, everything is, everything's pretty straightforward up to right here. 
then you've got to do a little bit of algebra to get to this equation, and then you can solve this thing um, by guessing values of theta, knowing it's between 0 and 3.14, so you might start with 1 or 1 and a half or something, and you can plug in and, and kind of bracket the, the 0. You could do it without a, a computer. You could do it with solver. There's also a graphical method that can be used where you um, look up the value in a chart uh, and I don't, I'm not going to do that here, but um, really it's better, I think the best way to do it is to set up a spreadsheet that you can then use over and over again. So, so anyway, hopefully that illustrates how you can figure out the geometry of a partially flowing pipe uh, without a computer.